We are preparing to go live. All right. We are probably going to be live any second now, if not for right now. We are now streaming live on YouTube, according to. Cool. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I see the the live stuff here. Yeah. There's like a countdown. Is still like five minutes or so. What's that? Oh wait, no. There's a streaming now. Yeah, we're streaming now. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, I am here with the Moonbeam team. I'm here with uh, Alberto and Kathy uh, from Moonbeam. We're really excited to be uh, going into this and uh, and learning more about uh, the EVM compatible polka dot chain Moonbeam, uh, which I personally tested out, um, and it's it's a really clean interface. Uh, Alberto had a uh, had an awesome uh, prizes video uh, that hopefully all you guys checked out, but. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Moonbeam team and, and let them take it uh, take it from here. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, I'm truly excited to be here. I, I really enjoyed the the last workshop we did, I think a month ago or so. So it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again and present uh, in a in a Chainlink uh, event, right? So I, and Moonbeam is super excited to be part of a sponsor uh, of the event. So yeah, like Patrick mentioned, I'm Alberto. I, I work at developer relations at Pure Stake, and uh, today I'll be presenting to you how to get started on Moonbeam. Uh, and use Chainlink oracles. So um, please feel free to always like chime in questions in YouTube. And I have Kathy with me. She like she will share those questions with me over Zoom. And I'll be happy to interrupt my presentation and and, and check the questions and answer uh, them as as we go. All right. So yeah, let's get started. Um, today's agenda it's it's going to be a little bit of like a, I really like like self-contained presentations. So as always, I'll do a brief introduction of what it's Moonbeam. Uh, and we also go into some technical details. And then uh, we'll move to a, a demo time. And this time I prepared some additional slides to show you guys uh, how you can get started in Moonbeam, like different ways you can do so and, and so on. And of course, we also have a demo that includes uh, some Chainlink stuff uh, that it's running currently in our testnet called Moonbase Alpha. So I, I really like the meme on the right-hand side because it tells you like Moonbeam brings Ethereum and Polkadot together. And I think it's a pretty, pretty nice image. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I, I guess um, the first question we have to ask ourselves, it's, it's what it's Moonbeam, right? So if you're not familiar with the Polkadot ecosystem or Kusama, basically Polkadot and Kusama are blockchains that are called relay chains, right? And the idea is that they provide shared security to a bunch of blockchains that will connect to, to it. And these blockchains that connect are, are called parachains. But the problem is that the relay chains, they don't offer like smart contracts capabilities and they leave a lot of these features to this uh, parachains. So Moonbeam is, is a smart contract parachain on Polkadot and Kusama. And, and we like to say that we're the easiest entry point for Ethereum projects because we are fully focused on, on deep Ethereum compatibility. And if we're gonna talk about Polkadot, we have to talk about crushing integration because basically, um, Polkadot, the main selling point is that you will be able to, to communicate with all the parachains that are a part of the ecosystem. And if you're wondering where the name Moonbeam comes from, it's from the Jazz standard uh, Polkadots and Moonbeams. So Moonbeam's Ethereum compatibility helped Polkadots in, in many ways, but we're gonna only like talk about briefly about uh, three of them. So first, of course, it provides an easy on-ramp for existing projects and developers because we fully support Web3 and, and we, like the Web3 API and we have an EVM. So existing projects can get started uh, with working on Polkadot with minimal effort, like Patrick mentioned, right? It's, it's super easy and super straightforward to get started on Moonbeam. It's just a matter of minutes, in fact. Um, and connected to this first point, uh, we also offer the choice of popular Ethereum development tools. And this is part of a, like our Ethereum compatibility package, right? So developers can use the tools that they know and love and have worked with them for several years um, to work on Moonbeam. So these tools include MetaMask, Remix, Truffle, Hardhat, a lot of the most popular like Ethereum libraries and so on. But Moonbeam is more than just like an EVM on top of a substrate based chain, right? We, we extend uh, beyond like smart contracts and tools. We've also uh, modified the underlying account system in a way that we only use the Ethereum style account format. So you, you, you will use your Ethereum account uh, to stuff like to, to not, not only like sign EVM transactions, but you can also use it to do a substrate or Polkadot based features such as governance and staking. So this is actually truly exciting. 
And we also offer stuff like event subscriptions and we're working uh, for a lot to working on a debug API to help like indexers work on Moonbeam and so on. So it's, it's just more like a, a simple EVM layer. We've added a lot of like features to become like the, the most frictionless Ethereum environment in the Polkadot ecosystem. So why does a multi chain strategy make sense? And today I'm gonna to talk only about the first two uh, discussion panels that we see on, this, on the screen. I mean, this is probably like a never ending discussion that you can have with friends, but basically, um, the, the first one is the lost market opportunity. And we have discussed with multiple projects that, you know, let's say you're a project that wants to do like an online game or whatever, and you need to roll a dice on chain for, I don't know, transparency issues, right? Uh, um, and so basically, if you want to roll a dice with a BRF on chain, it, it, in, in Ethereum L1, it, it could cost you like $20, $40. So basically your, your, your use case is, is priced out because of, of current high gas fees, right? So they might be another, like in a multi-chain strategy, you might deploy your, your, your game or whatever to a different chain where it just makes more economical sense for your project to, to live on, right? Um, the second point is first movers in new markets. And the idea is that you can draw new users and gain access to assets that are not native, natively available on Ethereum. And this is just extends beyond DOT and KSM, which are the tokens of Polkadot and Kusama, but also a growing list of, of parachain-based assets that is, is growing like every month, right? So we have different exciting projects that are joining the, the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems that will bring a, a ton of new like parachain-based assets. And by deploying your smart contracts to Moonbeam, Moonbeam can be your gateway to all these new asset pools that will become available. So yeah, like welcome to the multi-chain future. And, and basically how we envision this is that uh, we don't see ourselves as an Ethereum competitor. We, we believe like in a multi-chain future world, you know, there will be multiple chains coexisting with each other. And let's say that your smart contracts are solidity based, right? And you actually have deployed them to Ethereum. And moreover, let's say that you're using a deployment tool such as Truffle or Hardhat. Um, you can actually just like configure your deployment tool with an extra provider, right? So instead of being like an Ethereum-based provider, you can just point it to currently our, our uh, testnet called Moonbase Alpha. And with that simple configuration that we're talking that it only takes like five minutes or so, you can deploy your contracts so that they live on, on the Moonbase Alpha testnet or Moonbeam in the future. And with that, you will have access to, like I mentioned, the whole Polkadot ecosystem. And this is, this is truly exciting how we envision the multi-chain future. So some of the projects uh, that have been working on Moonbeam deployments include SushiSwap, uh, Balancer, Ocean Protocol, Chainsafe, of course, Chainlink, and, and some other projects, and I'm not going to go through them, but we're, we're building a, a truly exciting ecosystem of, of projects that uh, are deploying on Moonbeam, and we're honestly excited about what's, what's to come. So to get a little bit more technical, how, how do we bring Ethereum compatibility to a substrate-based chain? And um, before we go into like the details, uh, let's just briefly review the like, like, ETH JSON RPC uh, uh, communication method or protocol, right? So if you're an Ethereum user or developer on the left-hand side, and you use like tools such as MetaMask, Remix, Truffle, Hardhat, the Web3 JavaScript library, and so on, basically what these tools allow you to is to communicate uh, to, with an Ethereum node in a, in a matter of like you make a request, and then the Ethereum node will process that request and will send a response via like a JSON RPC, right? So let's say you have MetaMask connected to, to that Ethereum network. And basically MetaMask is making requests like, hey, can I know the balance of this account? Or can I know the latest block number? Can I get the chain ID so I, I'm, I can verify that I'm connected to the right network and, and so on, right? So every request that MetaMask does to the Ethereum node, it'll get a response uh, specific to that request, okay? So in Moonbeam, uh, how, how, did that, how does that look, right? So for that, we have to introduce a concept called Frontier. It's actually Frontier is a project by Parity, and we've worked quite closely with the Frontier project that brings this Ethereum compatibility features to a substrate-based chain. And substrate is a framework that we use to build Moonbeam, and it was built as well by Parity. And it's a framework that allows you to build uh, blockchains. I, I would generalize this to Polkadot, which is not entirely true, but it's different, like you know, a technology stack that that uh, Geth and Ethereum, right, or open open uh, Ethereum. 
Um, so the idea is this. Let's say you're once again an Ethereum user or developer, and you'll interact with Moonbeam as you would with a regular like Ethereum uh, environment, right? The thing that you'll have Frontier in the middle, and how I like to you know, explain Frontier is like a black box definition, meaning that it's actually like a translator that will do the magic for you. And, and you don't have to worry about, I'm working with Moonbeam, it's a different technology stack. How do I get started? It will feel just like, like Ethereum, but you'll have Frontier in the middle doing that the heavy lifting, if we can say it like that. But if we want to go into a little bit more detail, this is more or less how, how this looks at a very high level. Though. So let's say on the left-hand side, we have the Ethereum JSON RPC, and we have or like you know, Truffle, Hardhead, and other Ethereum libraries. What they will do is that they will actually interact with the Frontier RPC extension. And this Frontier RPC extension, it what has the Web3 JavaScript compatible API or the, you know, the JSON, the eighth JSON RPC compatible API. And it would map all these calls to substrate runtime calls. All right. So like I mentioned before, it's like a translation between what Ethereum understands and what substrate understands. And this works at par with the Palette Ethereum. And Palette Ethereum at a very generalized definition, it provides like um, Ethereum emulated blocks, because when uh, Frontier received a request saying, I want to know this information from this block or, or whatever, uh, you know, Palette Ethereum will provide this emulated block uh, for, for this kind of information besides other things, right? But at a very high level, this is uh, technically how, how it works. Now we also have Palette EVM and, and the Rust EVM. And by the way, Palettes are just, I like to think of them like building blocks or building Lego blocks that you can like put into the substrate based chain to add functionalities to it. So enough of the like the jibber jabber and the technical stuff, right? What does this mean uh, practically, right? And, and just in very simple terms, let's say you go into the ETH wiki JSON RPC API from Ethereum and you make a curl command, you, you can run a curl command by, in this case is HTTPS uh, thing you see, you see here is a HTTP endpoint of our Moonbase alpha testnet. And this is a JSON RPC blob. Basically, you can see that in methods, we're actually requesting the ETH underscore get balance. And in parameters, we're passing the account that we want to query the balance from, right? And in here, we're putting latest, latest just to make sure that we're getting the latest, uh, the, the balance from the latest block available. And if we do that in a terminal, you will get this response. And this response, uh, it's basically, uh, this number in way uh, and dev tokens, which is the tokens of our testnet. And this is basically the same thing you will see in MetaMask. So MetaMask actually, one of the JSON RPC calls that it does is, is this exact one, right? And, but this is against, like I mentioned, a different technology stack that it's, that it's substrate. So this is basically Frontier doing its magic to provide you the same response that you would get as you would do like against like a, an Ethereum node. And well, when I like when I learned this, like you know, some months ago, I was like truly mind blown. It's like the experience is just exactly the same. And and as we go with the demo, you will see exactly that that it's, it's very frictionless. You don't, I can I can do a demo for you, and if I don't tell you that I'm I'm on Moonbeam, you might not even notice. So yeah, I mean, uh, with all that and uh, accounted, let's let's go for the demo. But first, I want to do some slides to, to explain some like features, how you can get started and, and explain a little bit about the chaining module architecture, uh, like models that we've deployed to our testnet. So let's say that you're a developer and you want to get started uh, on Moonbeam like right after this presentation, right? That would be awesome. <laughs> so there are like two ways you can actually do that. Uh, you can build a standalone node for yourself or you can go uh, down the, the testnet uh, path, which is uh, our testnet, like I mentioned, it's Moonbase Alpha. So in a standalone node, uh, you have something called instant seal. And if you're familiar with Ganache, instant seal is, is similar, like meaning that only a block will be produced when there is a transaction on queue. And this is like, honestly, super fast for development. If you're like testing stuff, you're like testing your smart contracts, checking them out if they work or not. I mean, this is super useful because it's, it's just, there is no like lag between you sending a transaction and that transaction being processed in the block, right? Let's say you wanted to start with a standalone node. So you can actually start with a Docker image which has, which has a pre-built binary uh, of the node and you can run it in dev mode. And this is like, honestly, the, the fastest way you can get started on the standalone node path, right? Um, 
if the other the other way you can do that as well is by cloning the uh, repo that we have on GitHub, compiling the binary and running that binary in dash dash dev mode. So the dash dash dev it's a flag that in our case just, just uh, basically runs a node in a standalone way. Let's let's say it like that. But this is one way of starting. What about the testnet? So yeah, the testnet is accessible for all, and that's like I would say it's even faster to get started on the testnet because you don't have to like even you know, run the Docker image or anything. It's like super fast. Uh, so we provide an HTTP and the WebSocket endpoint for the testnet. There is a token fa faucet as well. You can get dev tokens to, you know, get started, play around with the tokens and, and so on. And uh, some features that we recently like launched is the staking and governance features. And we're truly excited about this because like I mentioned, you can use your regular Ethereum account that you can create, for example, via MetaMask to like sign transactions related to staking and governance on chain, which is, is truly exciting. So, I mean, like I mentioned, these are the two ways you can get started. So let's, let's go down the standalone node path. So the standalone node, if you run it with the default settings, you'll have uh, an HTTP endpoint at port 9933 and a WebSocket endpoint at port 9944. If you're interested in the Docker way, this is uh, the one-liner command. It's not one-liner, it's four, but just because we have this, this uh, slash. But basically it's like a one-liner, like a, a thing that you can get started with a standalone node, like super, super fast. Um, and if I actually go to my terminal here and I do have the one-liner, I mean, I do have some extra flags. It's because I'm running it on Windows, but this, this command that I showed on the slide, it's, it's for Ubuntu, for example, it's like, it's like straightforward. But I do have some commands because I'm running a Windows. But you can see here that once I run this command, I will get a standalone node running in a matter of, of, of seconds. If you don't have the image, it'll just pull the image and so on. But it's super fast. Um, if you want to clone the repository and build the binary yourself, that, which this actually needs Rust, you have to. You can clone the tutorial v6 flag, uh, sorry uh, tag, and then go into the movie folder and run the init script. And this will make sure that you have the correct Rust version via like Rust toolchain. Then you can actually build the binary running cargo build dash dash release. And this process can take around 30 minutes. It really depends on on, on your machine, but it, it takes a while, right? So that's why I personally prefer the Docker way. But either way, we provide both both ways. And last but not least, once you have the binary uh, built, you can run it uh, with the, the following command. Make sure that you add the dash dash dev flag. There are also extra flags you can use, and I put them here so that way you have like a, a source of information uh, if you want to get started with the standalone node. Let's say that you want to, uh, don't, you don't want instant seal. You want to have like a regular, you know, block production time, and then you can use the dash dash sealing flag and provide a time in milliseconds. Another very useful flag, it's um, is uh, uh, RPC trace flag. And what this does is that it'll show you in the terminal every RPC call that uh, the node receives, right? So this is super useful when you're like, I don't know, trying a front end and wanna see if you're like doing the right stuff or doing the, the right, uh, you're calling the right methods. You can check at a node level what RPC calls are, are being received by the node. And this is, this is quite useful. If you went down the, the clone repo path and you want to create a temporary node, uh, you can uh, add the dash dash TMP flag. This is also true for, it can be true for the Docker image case, but I mean, if you run the Docker image with dash dash RM, which removes the container once you are done with, with the, with you, once you stop it, it's, it's kind of like similar. You also have the no telemetry flag because it's in standalone, uh, the telemetry uh, exporter doesn't make a lot of sense. And actually there's some errors, warnings that you know, will pop up once in a while. So if you wanna see those, if you don't wanna see those warnings, you can add the, the no telemetry flag. If you're running the clone repo and wanna delete the local chain, you can do so by using the purge chain command and dash dash dev, all right? So this is different than the dash dash TMP because this is, once you stop this binary uh, running, it'll basically, you'll have a fresh instance of the, of the blockchain uh, if you restart. And here, you're gonna have like local storage, but if you wanna purchase storage, you can use this command. And last but not least, this is quite useful. Um, let's say you're working in a shared environment and someone else is using already these, these two ports, the ports that I, I put on the top, you can specify custom uh, RPC and WebSocket ports by using these two flags, all right?
But now let's say that um, you want to start with the test set and not the standalone node, right? So basically what you can do is use the HTTP and WebSocket endpoints that I, I put here on the slide. And I just put some different examples. Let's say you're using the Web3 JavaScript library and you would just pass on the HTTP endpoint to the Web3 constructor to create the, the Web3 instance. In the case of Ether.js, uh, I recommend using the static JSON RPC provider well, you will pass the, the once again, the HTTP endpoint and, and some information regarding the testnet. And last but not least, we have the Truffle and Hard Hat uh, as an example, where you can define the provider in the, in the Truffle config file or Hard Hat config file. In the case of Truffle, you can use the HE wallet provider, for example, where you pass in the private key, the endpoint, and the network ID. And it's very similar in the case of Hard Hat, as you can see here on the screen. So yeah, I mean, this is like, I would say the, the fastest way to get started, as you can see, it's just like minor changes that you can do to your, you know, your code and all that. So it's, it's quite a straightforward way to get started on, on Moonbeam. All right, so um, in case of Chainlink, we do have two models implemented in our Moonbase alpha testing. So we have the basic request model and, and price feeds. So before I, I showed you this on a demo, I want to make sure that you understand you know, the differences between each of these models. In the basic request model, um, basically you'll have, as a consumer, let's say you want to request a certain price, uh, uh, let's say a BTC versus uh, USD. So in your Kinglink client contract, you will actually initiate a request with a job ID that, that is specifically to that price pair that you want to request. And then via the link token, this request will create uh, an event in the Oracle contract, right? And this Oracle contract, the event emitted by that contract will be fetched by the Oracle node that it's an off-chain worker. So this Oracle node will then get the data from whatever API it uses, and it will send another transaction back via the Oracle contract through a callback function to the Chainlink client contract to write that data on chain, right? So it's like a let's say like a two-way method, right? You send a transaction one way from the user to the, to the Oracle node, and then there's another transaction from the Oracle node to the user contract to write that data on chain. Um, currently in the model that we have implemented in a testnet, the link token payment can be set to zero. And, and so it's, it's basically you know, quite straightforward to use. But on the other hand, you also have the chain link price feeds. And the idea is that, uh, as a consumer, you can use a contract that reads the data via a proxy in an aggregator contract, right? So you, as a consumer, do only read only operations, right? So it's, you don't have to send a transaction to fetch that, that data from the aggregator contract. And this difference is quite important. As we'll see, I have another demo prepared where we will see this difference uh, uh, quite clearly. The Oracle note, once again, that it's, it's off chain, will write a transaction to, to, will send a transaction to write the data into this aggregator contract. In our case, we've configured this Oracle node so that the price is checked every minute from the API and it's only updated on chain every hour or if the deviation is really the, greater than 1%. So they're like, whatever comes first, right? And um, the, the, we prepared a dApp example just to show you guys, you know, like a sample dApp of, of using um, Chainlink Oracles on, on Moon, Moonbase Alpha, our testnet. And I just called it Moonlink Dashboard. So it's a very simple dashboard, nothing fancy, um, that to interact with Chainlink using our testnet. We have both Chainlink models, so the basic request model and the price feeds are included. And you can actually access it via this link down here that you can see on the slides. And I, we do have a repo with all the content of the presentation as well as as the code of this uh, Moonlink dashboard, as you can see here in this link. And I'll actually show you in, in a bit. So I guess, yeah, actually we're ready. And let's go ahead and, and start with the, like the live demo. Uh, before we do that, I wanna show you guys this. Oh, that's actually a question. I understand that you're emulating the EVM on the parachain but how you do interact with the actual uh, ERC-20 protocol without incurring uh, the expensive gas fees. So, all right, this is a, a good question. So basically um, you have to think that ERC, uh, the ERC is a token contract, right? So it's a contract that will live on Moonbeam. So at a gas level, so gas is a unit to pay for, for EVM execution, right? So 
Currently, the model that we have implemented in Moonbeam, at a gas level, it's it, it will be the same gas consumption to interact with an ERC token contract on Moonbeam than on Ethereum. What is different, and this is the, an important difference, is how much you pay for each gas unit. And that's the current problem that we see on Ethereum right now. So when, when gas prices are really high, it's, it's, it's basically how much you're paying in Ethereum the, the most famous the, the most famous unit to to talk about gas prices is way but like G way way so how much way are you paying for every gas unit that you consume right so like I mentioned before at a gas consumption level it will be the same what it will be different is is how much you pay for every uh, each gas unit so currently in our test set we do have a block gas limit of 15 million gas all right? And, and just as a comparison, and, and Ethereum mainnet right now has around 12 million, 12.5 million, I think, per, per block. So we're talking about that we actually have a higher gas limit per block, and we have further optimizations to do that can increase this gas limit per block, that this is per block, right? And we do expect to have a lower um, um, block time than, than an Ethereum. So we, we expect to target a six second block time. So this means there are two factors to account. We'll have a higher block gas uh, per per block, gas limit per block, sorry, and also uh, a smaller block time. So we, we expect that this will make uh, you know uh, a fee structure model that is, is much lower than current Ethereum. Hopefully that that answers your question. So in this repository that I, I showed on the on the link, uh, basically what we have done is that if you go into this Moonbeam presentations repo. We've created a branch for every presentation that we have, we have done. I think not all of them are there, but in this case, you can go into the Chainlink Hackathon. And in here, you'll find all the materials that will run uh, through today, right? And you can see here, you have the Moonlink Oracle's uh, code of the dashboard that I'll show you in a minute. And also you have like the, the slides, the presentation. I'll put the video recording of, of this presentation as well. The Chainlink Workshop, the Moon Builders Workshop, and, you know, and the dashboard as well. So yeah, um, to get started on Moonbeam, I think the easiest way is just to first visit our documentation side. So if you go to our, our the, um, website, which is moonbeam.network, and you click here on this docs uh, link, it will take you to our documentation side. And in here, you will find a lot of tutorials, a lot of integrations we have worked on. Like, for example, you can go to integrations, oracles, and then Chainlink. Um, or you have like the different ETH libraries that we've uh, in, like worked and make sure that they work with, with Moonbeam uh, with different examples as well. So in our case, what we need to do is, is click on getting started and you have local node and testnet. In our case, let's go for the testnet. And in here you have three options. You can uh, check the, the connect uh, HTTP endpoint and the WebSocket endpoint. You can also check the tutorial on how you can get tokens from our faucet and it's just like a you know a tutorials with pictures of how you can go to our discord channel and we have a bot there that you can you know request tokens by sending this command and last but not least how you can connect uh with metamask to our testnet so let's let's actually do this right now so i do have a uh, metamask here uh in in my browser and to connect to the testnet what you can do is go in the top right corner click on settings networks and then add network and in here you'll need to fill in this information and as you can see this information it is available on the tutorial all right once you're done with this and you click on save you actually just will just connect metamask to moonbase alpha as you can see here on my screen and i do have alice as my account and alice has 49.95 dub tokens and actually if you remember the docker node that i was i was running before um, that you can see that this is running in instant seal because uh, they, there, ha there has no been like there's no blocks being produced right now. So I can go ahead and and run once again the configure MetaMask to connect to my local node by providing the the default HTTP endpoint at port nine nine three three. If you do that and you connect to it, you can see that I have MetaMask connected to my standalone node. It's pretty straightforward. And I can go ahead and, and import this dev account, which holds all the funds, uh, a lot of funds available in the in the in a local node. And I can go ahead and send a transaction. So before I do that, one thing that might happen often when you're like developing is that 
MetaMask might have a different nonce than the actual one that you're current, uh, currently running on the network. If you want MetaMask to fetch like fresh data from your account uh, from, from on-chain, you can go ahead and click on settings, advance, and then reset account. So that way we're, sh we're sure that MetaMask will fetch latest nonce and, and everything uh, on-chain. So I can go ahead and now transfer tokens from my, in my local node. So let's go ahead and transfer uh, from the dev account to Alice. And let's put a thousand dev. I'll just click on this and I should be able to see this pretty right away. And I'll pop up my terminal and you can see that I have one block now because I sent a transaction. So this is the power of instant seal. It's like super fast for development. And it's like, you don't have to wait for, for any transaction time or anything. All right, so now that we have we're on the, the local node, let's let's go ahead and go to Remix. And this is another tool that it's quite used uh, by developers to like test stuff out on the go. Because Remix is in, like a web interface that has a Solidity compiler and a deployer as well. And just to show you guys that I created this hello world contract, which is super simple. It just stores this hello world um, word or string into this text uh, variable. And if you go to the compiler and make sure you compile this, then I can go to the deployer and run transactions and make sure that I'm in the injected Web3 environment. And what this does is that MetaMask will inject its provider to Remix and will use MetaMask as a signer. So I can go ahead and deploy this Hello World contract. When I click deploy, MetaMask will pop up as it would, it would regularly in an Ethereum uh, chain. And I can just confirm this transaction. Once again, because we're in instant seal, this is instantaneous. And we can see we have, oh, actually I had an old instance here. You can see that I have my hello world contract and I can click on text and get my hello world string. So super fast, super straightforward. If I would have shown you this before I started the presentation, you might've thought that this is like an Ethereum <laughs> node, right? All right, so with this first two uh, very simple demos, I think we can go ahead and, and go to this that I have here prepared. Um, we're gonna go through a very brief demo on Truffle and a very brief demo on Hardhead because those are the, like very loft tools to like deploy smart contracts and all. So what I've prepared is uh, I do have a node running in this machine. This is a different machine that the terminal that I showed you before. And what I do have prepared for you guys is the Truffle config file that has, uh, well, it has my inferior API key. It has my private key that I, the one that I use for demos. And I do have a wallet provider. And as you can see here, I've defined a Moonbase network and also a Rinkeby network, just to show you guys how easy it is to change from one uh, provider to the other. What we're gonna deploy is an ERC20 token contract and I've named this Moonlink and the ticker is MoonL. And if we see the, oh, actually, by the way, we're using Open Zeppelin ERC20 token contract. And if we see the deploy, uh, the, the, the migration script, you can see here that I'm just deploying the ERC20 token. And this is actually 1000 tokens just in way, right? So I can go ahead and go into my Truffle folder and I'll just run Truffle migrate dash dash network. And let's do Rinkeby first. So let's let's just do rank QB first. Uh, I think Truffle, I mean, I already compiled this contract, so this is not that important. As you can see, it will do a dry runner, a simulation first. And now it's actually doing the deployment on Ring QB. We do have to wait for uh, you know, a couple of seconds until this is included in a block. By the way, I'm, I'm using uh, Alice's private key and I did have some uh, uh, Rinkeby ETH on, on Alice's account. So as you can see, I have my ERC20 token contract as you would expect, but what if I just go ahead and instead of putting Rinkeby, I'll just put Moonbase. And it, it's just that simple. I mean, I, I honestly, it's just one word and we have, well, you know, we have a bunch of partners, like I mentioned before, and we had had great feedback, just like what Patrick mentioned at the, at the beginning, it's like, it's super simple to interact with Moonbeam and this is the experience we want uh, developers to have, right? So for that, for us, that's very important. As you can see right now, I'm deploying to Moonbase Alpha. And what I'll do now is connect my MetaMask to Moonbase Alpha. 
And I can go ahead and grab this contract address here and go to MetaMask and add it. Oh, I, I click an add token and then custom token and add the, the address here. And you can see Alice is the proud owner of a thousand Moonlink, well, Moon L tokens, right? And it is just that simple. That's that's how easy it is to change, uh, you know, from a, one provider to the other. The next example that I prepared, um, I don't think there's any questions yet. You're right. No. The next example I prepared is um, is for the hard hat deployment. So if you're not familiar with hard hat, it's, it's uh, just another like deployment tool that. So I just basically define a hard hat config file, as you can see here. I'm going to use ethers.js. Uh, to deploy the contracts and everything. I do have my Rinky B API and my private key, and I have to find uh, different, different networks now. I have Rinky B, I have Moonbase, and I have the standalone node that I'm running in this machine. As you can see, this is not the default port, but this is a different port. All right. And the contract that we're going to deploy is in, in an NFT contract, so an ERC721. So I think the NFT world is, is pretty crazy right now, so I thought it was cool to, to show this NFT contract. So this is a simple ERC721 from Open Seppling. I've included the URI storage module. So basically in the constructor, we're defining the Moonlink NFT token, ML NFT as a ticker, and then I've added the mint NFT function. And what this is gonna do, it's you can provide the token URI, and then it's gonna mint the token, right? And then it's, uh, it's gonna be basically the, the message sender is gonna be the owner of that token. And then it's going to set the token URI uh, to the one that we provide as a string. If you go to the scripts, we have two scripts. One is going to it's going to deploy the contract and it's going to mint one token for you guys. So basically, I do do I do get a lot of stuff for like console logging purposes. But you can see here that I got the designer, so I can console log its address, and then I fetch the contract um, the contract file. And then I create an instance and I call the deploy uh, the deploy method. And then I just wait until the contract is deployed. And once it is deployed, we can print the address on the terminal just to, just to see it. To mint the token, I first define the URI, as you can see here on line 18. And then I just use the mint function that I showed you before, passing in the string, which is in this case is NFT chain link hackathon movement 2021. And then we'll just wait until that transaction is included and print some stuff on the terminal. It's super simple. The min function, as you would expect, is basically the same as the min function in the other um, in the other the deployment script, but it's just only minting. It's just we'll, we'll provide a contract address and we'll just mint a bunch of tokens so you guys can check that out. So I do have my no local node running, so let's go ahead and mint and deploy our ERC721 token contract in the standalone node first. So I'll do npx hardhat run and then dash f network, oops. And alone, and then scripts deploy mint NFT. Like I mentioned before, this is using instant seal, so it should be pretty pretty fast. And I got already my contract address. So what I'll do is that I'll copy this. I already copied it and pasted it here. And I do have I, I do have one token minted already, right? But let's go ahead and in MetaMask, I'll connect to this local node, the one that I'm running on that machine and I'll add this con contract. And as you can see, I have one token, one NFT minted here in my balance. What I can do now is because I have instant seal, I can get crazy and mint, oops, and mint a bunch of tokens, right? I can mint one, another one, another one. <laughs> we can just keep going. I can do a loop even and just mint a bunch. And that's, I wanted to show you guys how fast it is to, to interact with a standalone node and instant seal. And as you can see, I think MetaMask has not updated the whole bit, but I have now four uh, Moonlink NFTs tokens minted in our, in our local node. So as you would expect, um, if I, I can run the deployment script, but changing the network, I'm not gonna do Rinkaby, I'll just go ahead and do Moonbase. And uh, yeah, you can see that this will use the same account. This is Alice's account to deploy the NFT. And it's gonna first deploy the contract and then it's gonna run the function uh, to mint the token contract. And as you would expect, this is not using instant seal because it's a test set. So it usually takes a while 
to deploy the token contract. There are no pending questions. Currently we're working uh, with, uh, this is the first testnet version that we've done. We, we have like multiple external collators and this is a great test for us, but we have seen that, you know, there's some, sometimes there is a little bit of lag with the transactions. We do have a new version coming up, I think next Friday that will fix a lot of this, you know, lagging. Sometimes you have transactions that they take 20 seconds or so to, to be included. Uh, this should be, get a lot better once we release uh, the next version next Friday. So I do have the token contract now, and while it is minted, I can go ahead and connect MetaMask to Moonbase Alpha. And I can add this token here, and hopefully it is minted already. As you can see, Alice has one ML NFT. And yeah, I mean, as you probably noticed, this, is, this might sound familiar to you guys if you're already familiar with the Ethereum world. Uh, it's just basically pointing it to a different provider that, that is Moonbase Alpha or Testnet. And it's just that easy to get started. So yeah. The last demo that I have for you, it's, uh, we're, we're, I'm actually super excited to show you guys this. It's the Moonlink dashboard that uh, we prepared for this demo. And this is, like I mentioned, uh, you can see the, the, the code of this, the source code of this uh, dashboard in the repo that I shared. Uh, don't judge the, the code because I'm, I'm like you know, the furthest uh, expert from React and React that you probably know. But uh, it just, it's just to show you like a cool interactive way of, 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 of interacting with the Chainlink oracles that are launched on, on Moonbase Alpha Testnet, right? Um, so the first thing you would notice is this, this table at the top. This is all the information regarding data price feeds. And I, like I mentioned to you, this is actually read-only operations. So I can actually go ahead and, and go to a, an incognito window where I don't have MetaMask and I can load this dashboard. And even though I won't be able to like, you know, connect MetaMask or like send a transaction down here, you know, this will show me the information that is available on the contracts, as you can see. So this is the Bitcoin USD price. This is the price that is stored right now on the contract. And this is the last time that it was updated. So actually, if we're lucky, uh, because almost one hour has passed, we will see this price change. Um, to 15.48 or whatever, when an hour uh, has passed exactly, all right? So in the dashboard, what you can do is connect MetaMask, make sure that MetaMask is connected. And down here, you have the basic request model. So I, I modified the contract a little bit so that it works better with this interface uh, because I wanted to have like this information of the last updated and the job ID. But as you can see here, the last transaction that it was done was to fetch the ETH USD price. So let's go ahead and get the BTC USD price. Before I do this, uh, let, let, let's go back a little bit and think what we've just, just done, right? So MetaMask has a nonce for Alice and we'd use Alice's account on Truffle and Hardhat. So actually the nonce increased. So what I have to do is go into, before I send this, I know that this is gonna happen already. So I'll go into settings, advanced, Reset account. Always remember to do that if you have like a transaction that it's pending for a very long time. It's, I always, it's a gotcha that always gets me. So, so once I, I've done that, I can go ahead and copy this job ID and I can submit this transaction. And you can see that MetaMask asked me to sign this and I'll just confirm. So basically, you know, I've added a, a bunch of like safety features that you can, if you try to, well, actually I have to wait until this transaction goes through, but um, because this is public, uh, basically if there is an ongoing uh, like petition, you won't be able to request for another one, right? Because like anyone can just come here and, and bombard this with petitions. So the idea is that there's some safety features, like if you cannot, you know, put a number here, or if there's already a transaction pending, you should not be able to send another uh, uh, request for another token price. I did not hear MetaMask. Oh yeah, okay. So I think this is already, it was already sent. So while we wait, let's go ahead and go up and see, see you can see here that the Bitcoin price was updated after right after one hour of the last uh, price, it was available on the dashboard. And while we update, uh, while we wait for this price to update, I can show you a little bit of this code that it's on the repo that I shared. This is the Moonlink Oracles. 
There is a brief readme of how you can you know, clone, clone this and, and get it running locally. But basically the idea is that if you go to the Ethereum folders and Web3, you will see that if, if MetaMask is detected, it will use MetaMask as a provider, but it'll not, if not, it'll just use the public HTTP endpoint that we have. And that is why when you go into the, the website and it doesn't detect MetaMask, it's still able to like read the, uh, the information of the data feed and show it to you. So if we're lucky enough, yeah, we are. You can see the here that we have the Bitcoin price and it was updated at 1549.12. And this is the job ID for, for that specific uh, price feed. And yeah, like I mentioned, uh, you can find the source code here. Uh, you know, you can play around with this, uh, build your own dashboard and, and, you know, modify it as you seem fit. But I, I thought it was a cool demo to show like real on-chain price data that is stored on the testnet in a nice looking, well, more or less nice looking interface. <laughs> All right. So just before I let you go, I finish with the presentation. Um, let's say that, yeah, everything sounds great. Um, you know, where can I learn more? Uh, basically, you can go into our one-stop shop that I showed you, which is our documentation site. In there, we have a lot of tutorials that, uh, regarding MetaMask, Remix, Truffle, and Hard Hat. Ethereum libraries, oracles. We do have a bridge that is running between Rinkeby and Coven and our testnet, our Moonbase Alpha testnet. And we have a lot more uh, information in there. Uh, feel free to check them out and, and contact us via Discord if you have any questions. We also started uh, a, a Moon Builders workshop that it's uh, a workshop that is gonna run once a month. And in here we left uh, the link to the our first workshop that is similar to getting started with Moonbeam, just in, need, in case you need any extra information. Um, so, uh, in, in, in terms of the Chainlink Hackathon Challenge, uh, we want you guys to use Chainlink on Moonbeam. The idea is to build a DOP uh, that uses Chainlink oracles in our testnet. You can find more information regarding Chainlink, like I mentioned, in our, in our website. Uh, we ask projects uh, that must not be forked, so only originals ideas uh, will be the one that you know, we'll, we'll check out. And we want this as a requirement as well. So we want you guys to document your experience. How easy was it? Did you hit any roadblocks and how we can improve? For us, it's really important to provide the, the most frictionless environment uh, for developers. So like we were really eager to, to learn of how we can improve your experience uh, to onboard on Moonbase Alpha or, or Moonbeam in general. And with that, yeah, how you can get in touch with us, uh, with the Moonbeam team, you can visit our website, which is moonbeam.network. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we do have uh, some, some GitHub uh, that we're very active, uh, some GitHub repos that we're very active. Uh, we're also active on Reddit. Visit our docs website. We have a Telegram and Discord channel and also a YouTube. Um, if you have any questions regarding development or you're a developer and have any inquiries, you can visit our Discord channel. We're very active there. And we're always open to you know, hear your, your, your problems and, and give you the, the best uh, you know, help possible. So. I hope to, to see you guys there. And, and yeah, thanks a lot for, for listening to this presentation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for jumping on. And uh, thanks to everyone for viewing. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody in the Discord. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon.